So as people are rolling in, I'll, I'll continue my story. So, so I discovered Kabbalah. I dove full in. I was going to every class. I took Kabbalah 1, Kabbalah 2, Kabbalah 3, Advanced Kabbalah, Kabbalah for beginners, Kabbalah for everything. <laughs> Kabbalah for people that are married, for Kabbalah for people that just got divorced, for, for Kabbalah for people that want to get remarried again. <laughs> it's like I, I think everything there was, um, numerology, astrology, uh, palm and face reading, there's, there's all this like really, really cool stuff that I that I discovered from it, but it was really all about why to do certain rituals. So a lot of times I find, you know, people go through those rituals and they're just doing it because it's how they learned it. It's the tradition. It's, it's what you're supposed to do. It's how you're supposed to do it. But that wasn't good enough for me. Like I, I just, I need to know why. And what Kabbalah did for me was it reconnected me to my roots of Judaism by explaining to me, okay, not just that you do this and you do it this way, the dogma, but why you do it and why you do it that way and why it's important and what's significant about that and how that relates to, you know, like practical everyday tools of, of living your life. So once I started to connect with a strong why, as, as we find in, in many areas of life, when you, when you have a strong why, you tend to do it, right? And and you don't have to, you don't have to think about motivating yourself. You don't have to think about, you know, getting yourself to do things or create new habits. You just do it because you have a strong reason to do it. So, this is this is kind of what unfolded for me was, it it started to become part of who I was. So that that's really what tonight is about is about helping you, not to change who you are but to more discover a deeper version of who you are and to relax into it. You know, it's not stressful. It's not like, oh, I got to do this and I got to do that and I got to do this and I got to do that so that you become it. No, you already are. It's a matter of like getting rid of all the stuff so that you can see who you truly are deep within and beyond all that uh, commercial clutter of life, the emails, the texts, the this, the that, the noise that, that's out there kind of distracting us, you know, and it makes us feel like we need to do all this stuff. But, you know, I was listening to, to one of my mentors, Brendan Burchard today, and, and he talks about, you know, like people in like the, the doldrums of, of everyday like doing, you know, and it just, it becomes routine, it becomes road, it becomes meaningless to them and and they have to find joy and excitement some way somehow and get themselves out of that by thinking okay the future is better like something about the future is better you know so right now we're kind of stuck in this situation where we're still under quarantine to a degree and things aren't really open and people can't do business like they used to and you know, people are worried, they're stressed out, they're, they're in fear, you know, and when, when you discover why to do something, and then you kind of live into it, and then you create a future worth belonging to, now, all of that fear and worry and minutia kind of fades to the side. So we're going to, we're going to go through that in the meditation tonight. So coming back to my hair being long, okay, I don't have a beard. I was, wait, I was waiting for that. Yeah. So this, this is the first time in years that I don't have a beard at this time of the year, like full, like Bushman really? beard, right? So in traditional Judaism, there is a very unobserved holiday called the Omer. Okay, but for some reason, when I was studying Kabbalah, I connected with this. And it's really one, one day soon, I'm, I'm putting together a meditation that will be a 50 week meditation based upon all of the, the elements of the Omer, because they're really, they're just like life principles. And the preface was when, you know, if you go back to the Old Testament, whether, whether you're Jewish or some other religion, the Old Testament tells a story of when the Jews left Israel, they, they went through the desert and it took 49 days for them to get to Mount Sinai where they received the, the Torah and the Ten Commandments, right? So the holiday 
that relates to just before they left it, Egypt was Passover, right? And then it's 49 days till a holiday called Shavuot, which is the holiday of, of receiving the light or the enlightenment from the higher power, okay? Whatever, whatever religion you are, you can apply that. <laughs> but in, you know, so there's 49 days of preparation and then on the 50th day, they receive that light. So as we go through life, we've, we've got, you know, we're, I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not perfect. <laughs> I make mistakes. I screw up all the time. I say the wrong things. I do the wrong things. If I do that during this class, I apologize in advance. I probably will. But what happens is, you know, we, we kind of build up all this stuff, you know, this guilt and drudgery and, you know, wrongdoings and bad vibes and karma and whatever you want to call it just kind of like builds up on top of us and we carry that around. So this period of time, the, you know, the Omer is from Passover to Shavuot. And what happens during that time is each day is a different meditation on cleansing an element of the deepest part of who you are, your soul or whatever part you want to name that. So we're kind of cleansing that and removing all of this minutia that blocks us from being pure so that we can receive the highest amount of light from the highest power and be enlightened, so to say, as, as we say it. And, you know, I like to look at it as when people are living their life fully authentic, that you shine, you know, you become really shiny. And, and you look at that as someone who's a high achiever, someone that you admire, or even look at how and why someone admires you for the things that you do. It's because you shine, you shine in that area. You know, people look at you and they say, I can't imagine you doing anything other than what you're doing right here, right now. You shine and you become shiny and people like shiny things or attracted to shiny things. So so this goal kind of like motivated me. It's like, why, why should I do that? You know, it's like, and, and a lot of people who are like very, very, you know, orthodox, religious, they don't, they don't follow this, but during this period of time, you don't cut your hair, right? And you don't shave. So it like, I, I can't say I've done it every year since I've learned it, but I, I did a lot. And then there were some years I just wasn't really feeling it. So this year just happened to be one of those years. I just wasn't really feeling it. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to cut my hair. I'm going to shave. I'm going to do all, you know, <laughs> and then, you know, and then right after, um, actually just before Passover, the whole world shut down. The first people taken offline were hairdressers because they're close proximity <laughs> and cutting people's hair. And, you know, they can't guarantee that all the equipment is perfectly sterilized or whatever. So they were the first people offline. So I was like, okay. You know, my higher power has got a really, really good sense of humor <laughs> and says, oh, you think you're going to take this year off from not cutting your hair? Well, you know, here you go. Now I made it illegal to get your hair cut. <laughs> I mean, unless you know someone. Ironically, um, I, I know someone very closely that, that is a hairdresser who would be willing to cut my hair, but I just decided, you know what, I'm not going to tempt fate at this point. I'm just going to go with the way the world's rolling and I'll wear a hat, you know, otherwise, see, my hair doesn't get long. It gets big. <laughs> it's pretty funny. So, you know, but this is, this is part of who I am and what, what I was reminded in kind of a blatant way was to remember, you know, so when you hear the word, remember, a lot of people don't really, you know, don't really unpack words the way that I do, but I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm the personal mind trainer, right? And, and how do I do that? Mostly with words, right? The words that I speak kind of guide you to think about things, to go into different states of awareness and to train yourself to have the results that you want in your life. So when I hear the word remember, it's, it's taken literally, it's, it's re- remembering things that happened. So the, this information gets stored in our brain, stored in our mind in bits and pieces, 
So there are things called submodalities, right? Our modalities are our five senses. Like we take in information with our five senses, right? So you see things, you hear things, you feel things, you taste them and you smell them. Right. So this is our sensory input of how we take in information. But two people can take in the same information and attach a different meaning to it. And then even years later, when they remember it, when they put all those pieces back together of how they took in that information, they put it back together differently. So every time you remember something, you remember it differently. So, you know, a lot of people always ask me that, you know, do I do past life regression? Oh, you do hypnosis? Do you do past life regression? And I tell them, no, I don't do past life regression. I do future life progression because to me, that's more useful. Going back into the past and discovering why you did something wrong. Um, yeah, it's, it's useful to learn a lesson, you know, so there are times where that's beneficial, but to dwell on the past, and to obsess on it and to, to dive into it full on and keep digging and digging and digging, I, I don't see a use to that for creating the future that you want. So what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna create a future memory, you know, you, some, a memory that you can live into, a memory that you spontaneously create and then you live into it. And we're gonna do that based upon an identity for yourself that you create. So a lot of people have expressed to me, and I'm, I'm going to give, I'm going to open up the the platform in a minute so that people can share if there's anything that you want to share, and and just tell me what what's going on for you that you need to make a shift, that you need to overcome, that you want to have become better in your life. But here's here's the preface of what we're going to do to make that happen is it's not about doing things differently as much as it is about finding out why, what's, what's the value that's expressed for you in doing it differently. But as a result of that, to make a shift at any level, you need to go to the level above. So the level above values is who you are. So that's why in, in the email that I sent out for this, I, I kind of, um, I have a friend um, in a foreign country and she's about um, six hours ahead of us. So it's a little too late for her to join, even though every week she, she sends me a text apologizing that she can't join, but it's, it's kind of like um, after one in the morning there and she's got to get up at five. So um, <laughs> definitely way too late for her. But the thing is that, you know, in, in the email that I sent out, it's, it's, kind of like comes up with a title for me, you know, of what I'm going to follow. And then I have a couple of bullet points that I want to address within that. And then it really just kind of flows from there. But tonight is really about making that change at the level of why or your values. Okay. And we do that from the level of identity. So a lot of people want to be more relaxed. They want to be so relaxed, right. That, that you can overcome, it becomes a superpower, right. So when relaxed is important to you, when you understand why you'd want to relax and what the value of that and the impact of that is on all areas of your life, then you can start to realize who are you to be so relaxed? So that was kind of the question that I asked in the email, who are you to be so relaxed, right? Like so relaxed that people are looking at like, are, are you not realizing what's going on in the world, right? You know, people come up to me, they go like, you seem so disconnected from the world, you know, like the world is going crazy right now. And you're like calm and relaxed and happy and excited and optimistic about the future. And I'm like, yeah. So it's like life, you know, my friend Julie on the line is going to laugh at this one, but life is choice, right, Julie? <laughs> um, and and it's, you know, I, I look at it that way, you know, we can choose the, the very first meditation that I did back in, um, in the middle of March was about the choice that, you know, there's, there's a stressful situation, there's a problem, and you can shift that and look at it as an opportunity. You can find the opportunity. There's always an opportunity, no matter how big the problem is, there's an opportunity, right? So 
you know, I was I was on this uh, class the other day, and they were talking about. Actually, it was a movie that I was watching about uh, Joseph Campbell, and you know, his, his motto was "Follow your bliss." Right? What's better than that? Follow your bliss. So we we can even use that in a meditation tonight. Right. So who are you to follow your bliss? Right. The best version of you following your bliss. I mean, what what better opportunity do you have to make a shift in your life for the better? Right. So that you start to feel good every day, no matter what's going on around you. You're unshakable. Right. I quoted a couple of weeks ago, just the title of a book, you know, unfuckwithable, you know, so pardon my language, but you know, you want to be unshakable, unfuckwithable. You want to, no one can steer you off of your course. Right. And one of, one of the best things to be able to do that is to have a clear idea of who you are and where you're going. What's next. Right. So you don't have to, you don't have to predict the future. You don't have to say, oh, the world's going to open up and all this is going to happen. And I got all these plans and how's it all going to unfold? No, just think about one thing, one area of your life. And we even, we even did part of this in one of the meditations in the past on the virtual vacation, right? So what's one thing that you could create right now that you could look forward to, right? Something that's already on your list of things to do, but you kind of put off right? Because you say, oh, uh, I'm going to wait and see, right? Well, tonight's not about waiting and seeing. Tonight is about seeing and believing and making it true. You're in control. The world doesn't determine what you think about. The world doesn't determine what's going to happen for you. You determine it, okay? You know, it's not about being under the circumstances. It's about rising above the circumstances and being the creator of the circumstances of your life. And you make it happen. You make it happen by your choices. You know, on a day-to-day, minute-to-minute, week-to-week basis, whatever it takes, your life is choice, right? And based on the choices that you make, is how you live your life. You make great choices, you live a great life. You make choices from a proactive point of view, you live a proactive life. You make choices based upon what you want, you get what you want, right? It's not about, oh, I don't want this to happen, I don't want that to happen, because where's your focus then? Your focus is on what you don't want, and you get whatever you focus on. You know, so it's about making that shift so that you can start to be the person who focuses on what you want, the best version of you, or at least a better version of you, right? So no matter how great we are, you can always be a little bit better, right? (laughs) Um, One of of my favorite quotes of hypnosis is Emile Kou, uh, a French hypnotist, I don't know, back a good couple of hundred years ago, Uh, said every day in every way you're getting better and better it's it's the ultimate suggestion right because no matter how great you are you're more than that right i mean it's it's the basis of of quantum belief right (laughs) is no matter how great you are no matter how wonderful your life is you're better than that you're more than that You can be and do and have everything that you want. Now, this is not just cliche. I'm going to guide you through this tonight for you to really decide or at least discover, right? So that, you know, I've I've said this before, but I'll say it again because it's appropriate for this class. Imagine a four paned window, right? And in window number one is everything that you know about yourself and everything that everyone knows about you. It's public information, right? In, in window number two, right? Okay, I'm looking at myself in the video, sorry. In window number two um, is everything you know about yourself, but no one knows about you. It's kind of private information, right? In, in window number three, oh, get my hand right. I got to stop looking at the screen. <laughs> window number three um, 
is everything that people can see in you that you don't see in yourself. So that's critique, that's feedback, that's people, you know, saying, hey, I, I don't know if you noticed, you know, that you were doing this or you're doing that, or, you know, I just read your email and the, and the spelling was wrong or whatever. They, they give you kind of feedback and, you know, the intent is usually good most of the time that you can do it better, right? But it's things that other people can notice about you that you're too close, you know, and you don't, you don't see it in yourself per se. So it's good, it's good information, it's good feedback, it helps us learn, it helps us to grow. And, and window number three is a really, really good window to start if you're looking to become a better version of yourself. You know, the public information, probably don't need to make much shift there. The private information, you already know what you know. So there's not much of a shift to make there. But window number three is kind of like where you can start to ask people. Say, hey, you know me pretty well. What, what can you tell me that, that might help me to make improvements in my life? What, what am I missing? What am I not seeing? Um, what's my superpower according to you? you know, so you can discover some different areas about yourself that you can become a better version of you, right? How can I become a better version of me? A lot of times books kind of make us aware of this stuff. But what we're going to get into tonight is window number four right? Window number four is what I like to call buried treasures, right? It's the things that you don't know about yourself and others don't know about you. It's, it's the area that you can really discover something that you didn't even know you were looking for. And yet it can become the best part of you, the best part of your life, the best part of how you live, right? Like I was explaining before in the story about Kabbalah, I'd never heard of Kabbalah growing up my whole life. I never, no one ever met, no rabbi, no religious person. No one ever mentioned Kabbalah to me. And then at, um, let's see, how old was I? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so yeah, 1995. So I was, I was 32. At 32, I discovered it, right? So you know, 32 years old, I was still young enough to discover something brand new that became a passion in my life that I never even knew of. It became a part of who I am and how I live my life. So at, at 22, I discovered skiing. My whole youth, I had, I had a friend, the best friend that every weekend him and, you know, every weekend during the winter, him and his parents would go to Mount Snow and go skiing. They had a cabin up there. They invited me like so many times and I just never went. And then when I was 22, my friend invited me to go with his uh, company to go skiing for the weekend. And I said, yes, because it was a great package deal and I had nothing to do that weekend. And I'd always thought about skiing and I just went. And that year alone, I went on 15 different trips to go skiing. I was hooked right away. So there are things in your life that you don't even see right now because they're buried. And with a little bit of exploring, with a little bit of digging, and, and now, if, if anything, you know, not everyone, but a lot of people have more time now. And, you know, we still have the internet, thank God. And you can go on the internet and you can search things that you, you might have always thought you were interested in. And maybe you discover, I don't know, becoming a, 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 a chef, you know, a French chef in the culinary arts or learn Chinese cooking or um, learn how to play chess or you know, learn how to crochet or, <laughs> or how to, you know, basket weave or how to do, uh, you know, carpentry or, you know, some skill or some ability or some thing, some hobby, some, you know, painting or, you know, th there's, there's tons and tons of classes online now. I mean, I, I just finished a course a couple of months ago with Tony Robbins and Dean Graciosi on becoming a knowledge broker. And really the preface behind that is that each one of us, if you've been doing something for five or 10 or 15 or 20 years, you're an expert. More so than any college professor, more so than 
than someone who's just read books on it. You've been doing it. So you've got this knowledge base, this wisdom of experience, right? And there's a lot of people out there with a lot of wisdom and experience in areas that you might have an interest in. So this, this is the time now to explore, to, to have like a, a rebirth of who you are, right? To, you know, I, I hate the term reinvent yourself, um, but I like the term discover. Discover a new aspect of who you are. Start digging and find that buried treasure. That's really what tonight's all about. So um, I'm going to open it up for a minute for people to share, um, hopefully one at a time. I'll do, I'll do my best to direct that. Um, but yeah, I'd, li I'd like you to share something that's going on for you right now that um, that you would love to see shift or change on, on some level and, you know, and then, and then I'll help you shape that into how you can be the person that makes that happen. And then we'll kind of do that as the setup before, um, before we dive into the meditation to integrate all of this. Okay. So who'd like to go first? Hey, I will. It's Barbara. Hi. Hi, Barbara. Um, but it's really not what you're asking. I was just frustrated that I don't get your emails, and I just saw at seven minutes after seven tonight, I got it. Okay, yeah. And I, I wanted to share it with people. Okay, so that's great. Um, we can share it for next week, but you're here now. <laughs> I'm here now. And I'm Thank goodness, I'm here. right? Okay, I'm here. So, so what, what's going on in your life that might be a, a stressor that you, you can overcome if, if you had the right... Um, identity to do so right now i'm not in touch with that because i'm taking it one day at a time and every day is a happy day okay so that's like that's my truth i'm not in touch with any stresses right now okay cool but i want to meditate <laughs> okay so this is going to help you to get even better at that great thank you cool who else would like to share i'll share okay ed so, uh, you know, I, I think, I, I don't know if I mentioned to you, but my wife is uh, back in the hospital, so I'd like to uh, meditate to relieve some stress. Me and my daughter are trying to relinquish some of that. Okay. So, so what I want you to think about is who do you need to be to make that happen? I need to be my unstoppable Ed. Cool. That's that's a good um, a good title to live into. Unstoppable. <laughs> unstoppable. Okay. Unreplaceable and unstoppable. So, if you were unstoppable now, what would how would that benefit you in your life? Um, it benefits me and sometimes also the people around me because they know that they can count on me to uplift them. And when I am unstoppable, I am just a force of nature, and I don't allow anybody to get in my way of getting where I want to go. And like I said, the last couple of weeks have been a little challenging with my wife, but honestly, she's in the hospital and I'm pretty relaxed right now. Okay. I feel bad for her because I just wanted to feel better. Okay. So the focus is on being unstoppable and uplifting Ed. Yes. Cool. Okay. Who else would like to share? Um, anyone else? You'll get, you'll get more of a benefit from sharing, but even if you don't share, I want you to think about it. I want you to think about what's going on in your life, what stressors, be it, um, you know, I, I'll go. Okay. Um, yes, and I've noticed this, this decision making, like, um, buying something, buying a house, a condo, is my least is going to be back when Wednesday. So that's kind of a stressor because, you know, it's stressful to think where you're going to live and where you're going to be happy. And so that's kind of going on. You're not coming across very clear, Julie, or at least I can't hear you clearly. I don't know if you're on speakerphone or. Hi, let me take this off. Wait a second. Uh oh. Right now, okay. she's muted. 
Yeah, now she's muted. I don't know what oh, she's doing. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Now we can, yeah. Yeah, I, I had it on a speaker, so. Oh, okay. That, that's a me? lot better. Thank you. Yeah, you can't hear me on a speaker, I guess. Um, I was saying that decision-making is kind of a stressor in my life right now because I know I'm going to embark on some chain changes with where I'm going to be living. And actually, Ed is helping me with that because he's a realtor. Okay, cool. So, so let's, let's um, and we'll play around with this in the trance, but what I want you to think about is the day after you've moved into your new place. Mm-hmm. Okay. So how are you feeling the day after you, the day relieved. after you moved into your new place? Relieved, relaxed. Okay. Happy, like it's my home. I want to feel like that. It's my home. Okay. So there you are. You're in your home. Your home. Who are you in your home? I'm owning it instead of renting it. <laughs> so I'm the right. owner. <laughs> so you're a homeowner, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And who are you to be a homeowner? Um, who am I to be a homeowner? Yeah. I'm, I'm not really sure how to answer that. Well, if you were sure, who do you think you are? Satisfied with where I'm at. Okay. So, so that's, you're a homeowner and you're satisfied. Yes. You wouldn't be feeling a little bit of stress from all the cartons that you have to unpack and, <laughs> no. and, and put into their proper rooms? Yeah, that's true. Okay, so we'll, we'll fast, Craig, <laughs> for you, we'll fast forward to the day after everything's unpacked and she's Perfect. settled in and decorated and all your pictures <laughs> of your family are hung up and, um, you know, the curtains are exactly what you want and, and you got all your furniture in place and it's the day after that. <laughs> okay perfect okay so so that's that's what you want to live into in this trance you want you want to be the person who's satisfied that you own a home and it's decorated the way that you want it to be you're in the area you want to live and and you're satisfied right 100 percent. yep cool Thank you. Okay. So anyone else want to want to share something going on for them or a challenge or stress, whatever you want to call it that, um, that they want to live into a better version of themselves to have their superpowers to overcome it <laughs> because of who you are, right? Who you are is so much bigger than any problem that you could have in your life. So I, I'm listening to this recording one time about this guy, you know, who's, uh, you know, complaining about all this stuff going on in his life and, and his spiritual leader, you know, we're, I'm on a spiritual mode tonight. So <laughs> I'm not trying to step on anybody's religion, but it's just the story has that basis. So um, this guy, um, you know, is complaining about all this stuff going on in his life and, and his spiritual leader says, um, stop telling, uh, Stop telling God how big your problems are and start telling your problems how big God is, you know, or your higher power, your spiritual power that, you know, whatever you connect with. So, again, not to get overly uh, religious on it, but to, to just look at who are you, you know, stop telling, you know, stop telling people how big your problems are, okay, and start telling your problems how big you are to overcome that. That's what this is about tonight is to become a bigger and better and new and improved, uh, more resilient, uh, more satisfied, more uplifting version of yourself so that problems are no longer problems. You know, people, people go to the gym and they lift weights, right? You know, so I'm going to use the metaphor of my title right? <laughs> I'm the personal mind trainer. So what does that mean? You know, people go to the gym and they hire a personal trainer so that they can lift weights, right? But they're not satisfied that, okay, I once, 
they set a goal to lift 50 pounds and they can lift 50 pounds and they're not satisfied with that. They want to lift 60 pounds or 80 pounds or 100 pounds and they just, you want to keep improving, always have room for improvement or, or maybe you don't want to bulk up and lift more weights, but you want to do, um, you want to do 50 pounds for 20 reps and you want to do 50 pounds for 30 reps or 40 reps or 50 reps and you want to tone your body you know, which is kind of the route that I've always gone. I've never, I've never really gone for lifting heavier weights because I never wanted to get so big that if I didn't work out, I, it would all turn to fat. So I've always worked out where I do things in higher repetition, but lower weights. So a lot of times, you know, you could look at who you are and the heavy lifting is really just filling your mind with the right positive vibe that will accomplish what you want. So, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I wish I wish I could eliminate the stress in my life. And I, I've never worked with anyone that actually really wanted to eliminate the stress in their life. So really what they wanted to do is to be bigger and stronger and build up their stress muscles so that the stressors in your life seem less stressful right? It's not about eliminating the stress. Those things in our lives or anything in your life that you think is a stressor, it's, it's really a stimulus. And you can respond to that how you choose. And that's what this is about tonight. In, in about five minutes, we're going to dive into a meditation to help you so that you can look at the stresses in your life and use them as an opportunity to see where you need to grow, right? So th I don't think there's anyone in the entire world that predicted what's going on in the world right now. So this is, this is an unpredictable event in our lives. We're living history right now. It's an unpredictable event in our lives, which is an unpredictable opportunity in our lives to discover those things in window, window, <laughs> I don't remember which hand, window number four, right? Those, those buried treasures, right? To discover those buried treasures and to be able to just dive in and really explore, right? So, you know, sometimes it takes a stress for us to build our stress lifting muscles to overcome it to realize a better version of who you are and what better opportunity to discover a buried treasure than an unpredicted stress that will help you to grow in an area that you've never, that you've never explored before. So to me, this is the perfect opportunity to unbury some treasures. And that's what I'm going to guide you through tonight is to be able to do that. So, um, what you can do to get set up uh, in the best way possible is um, if you have a nice relaxing chair to, to be sitting in uh, where you're comfortable and um, either headphones or speakers that'll, that'll play the music um, without you having to do anything. So if you get nice and relaxed, you just get nice and relaxed. That's it. Um, you know, don't let any of the technology um, be any additional cause to, to feel anything less than your ideal relaxed self. So as always, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my screen with some music and let me uh, expand this a little bit. Just getting set up here. Okay, so so I'm gonna I'm gonna mute everybody. Um, I will unmute you when when we're done, and give you the opportunity, as always, to um, to share some feedback with me. But I find if I mute everybody, then there's there's less uh, less chance of a distraction. So again, there's no, uh, no special skills needed. I'm gonna guide you through everything that you need to do. And you can just uh, sit back and relax 
and enjoy the ride. And you might find yourself paying attention to everything I say. You might find yourself drifting in and out. Um, you might find yourself not remembering anything I said. <laughs> and, and it's all good. So I'm going to share my sound with you so we get the, the music coming through nice and clear. And okay. Not really what I wanted to share here, but um, okay, we'll just put that on. How about that? <laughs> and Okay, so you can begin very simply by taking a nice deep breath and you can hold it for a moment. And as you exhale, just allow yourself to relax. As you exhale gently and continue to breathe in deeply and exhale slowly. And at first you might become more aware of some things than you were before the sound of my voice, the sounds in the room, the thoughts in your head may drift off and that's fine. To allow your awareness to shift in ways that you can begin to explore deeper and deeper versions of a more relaxed version of yourself. Because this is really about you and discovering skills and abilities that you already have and awareness deep within all aspects of who you truly are becoming even more of who you truly are, relaxed in your body and in your mind. You can take a moment and imagine being in a favorite place, a favorite time in your life, or doing something you really enjoy. You might imagine yourself being alone or with someone else maybe someone you love, or certainly someone who loves you. Either way, you can just picture it, think about it. Imagine this in any way that makes it a most enjoyable experience for you. Because in a moment, I'm gonna to begin to mention various parts of your body, and as I do, I'd like you to just feel that part. Just begin to relax. Even more fully and completely with each breath you take in relaxation, Exhaling any stresses or tensions that might have been there, filling the spaces with pure relaxation. That's right. So as you continue to breathe in deeply and exhale slowly, you're learning to relax. And you can just allow your eyes to gently close. You don't have to force them shut. Just allow them to gently close and relax. as you explore what it would feel like to go deeper and deeper into this relaxation. As I mentioned various parts of your body, you can just feel that part, just begin to relax. Even more fully and completely with each breath you take in relaxation, exhaling any stresses or tensions that might've been there filling the spaces with pure relaxation. So as you continue to breathe in deeply and exhale slowly, I'd like you to place your awareness on relaxing the muscles in your feet. As you imagine them relaxing, you'll find they will do so. 
All you have to do is want this to happen. And then you can allow this to happen easily, naturally, seemingly automatically. Just allowing this relaxation to take you deeper and deeper relaxed in your body and in your mind. Imagining this relaxation moving up into your calves and relaxing all of the calf muscles. Again, all you have to do is want this to happen. And you can allow this to happen easily and naturally, automatically and effortlessly. Within or without your awareness. Moving up your thighs. Let the legs become very heavy and relaxed, almost as if they were sinking down into the chair. Relaxing up into the abdomen. Let the stomach muscles become loose and relaxed. Loose and relaxed. Loose and relaxed. moving up into the chest and the back and relaxing all of those muscles all the way down into your body. More and more relaxed. As you feel this relaxation, releasing any tensions or stresses you might've had in your neck and shoulders and just filling those spaces with pure relaxation in your body and in your mind. Relaxing all the way down into your upper arms, into your elbows. Relaxing all the way down into your forearms. Feeling this relaxation moving into your wrists moving into your hands. Feeling this relaxation in such a way you might begin to recognize a very pleasant tingling in your fingertips. Allowing this tingling in your fingertips and the relaxation in your body and in your mind. And now shift your awareness back up to the neck muscles the left side of the neck, the right side of the neck, relaxing up into the mouth and the jaw, releasing any stresses or tensions that might have been there, filling the spaces with pure relaxation, relaxing the facial muscles, relaxing the muscles around your eyes, Relaxing the muscles around your eyes in such a way that as long as you were to hold on to this quality of relaxation, the muscles around your eyes can become so relaxed that you may not be able to open them, even if you were to try. So I'd like you to listen very carefully to what I'm about to tell you. I'd like you to try and open your eyes only when you're absolutely certain that they're so relaxed that you cannot. That's right. It's this quality of relaxation you can begin to feel throughout your entire body now. As you continue to breathe in deeply and exhale slowly and realize this relaxation even as the muscles in your forehead smooth and relax smooth and relax smooth and relax until finally even the scalp muscles are relaxing that's right now as relaxed as you are you can deepen this relaxation much much more in a moment I'm going to ask you to realize something 
and as relaxed as you're feeling. And you can begin to notice how good it feels to be this relaxed. You'll realize that the better you feel, the deeper you go. And the deeper you go, the more relaxed you become. And the more relaxed you become, the better you feel. And you can just allow yourself to go into the deepest version of this process to allow yourself to feel as relaxed as you need and want to feel deeply relaxed to begin to explore explore your inner verse of who you are that's right there's things about you that you realize and the world realizes are obvious. And you and others can easily see this within yourself. And there are things that only you realize about yourself. And no one else even needs to know ever. This is your personal and private information about you. You might share bits and pieces of it with the people in your intimate relationships. But for the most part, it's yours and yours alone. The things that only you realize about yourself. question to ask yourself about that information though as much as it's information that's private and only you realize this about yourself have you ever considered to be open to exploring now if it's all true There might have been events that happened in your life that shaped these beliefs, these aspects of who you are that no one else knows. And yet maybe because you've never shared them, you've never explored them in the third aspect of things that others can see in you in ways that you can't even remotely see them within yourself. because we can't remotely see things within ourselves, at least not without the special guidance of exploring your mind in just this way, that you can begin to recognize yourself as the observer of yourself and see yourself as others see you. At first you can begin this through getting feedback from others and how you're able to recognize their perspective. as feedback. A lot of people think if they share their shortcomings with other people, if they allow themselves to be observed by other people in that critical way, that they can look at areas of their life where it seems like something less than success can be deemed a failure but it really is not. 
It's just feedback for you to recognize a better version of who you truly are, becoming a better version of who you truly are. And you can imagine yourself as you look into the mirror of your mind and see yourself through your mind's eye and just observe who do you think you are as the observer of you There's a story that's told of a magical garden that you can begin to explore. And within this garden, there are many buried treasures. The only thing is Not only is it not obvious where the treasures are buried, but there are actually things within the garden designed in such a way as to kind of trick you and make you think that that's where the treasure would be. But the thing with that is it's only based upon the things that you already realize. It's based upon the thinking skills that you already have. It's based upon the things that you already realize about yourself and how you take in information and how you see the world and the filters of what you hear and you don't hear. You might notice it based upon the things that are different. You might notice things based upon what's the same. You might notice things based upon what's similar yet different. And you might even notice things that are different and yet, pretty much the same. As you begin to explore your strengths and your skills and your abilities to go deeper into the garden. And as you look around, It can seem tricky to look for the place that seems like the least obvious place to find what you're looking for. Can you imagine that now? What would it take to think about the opposite? of how to find the place that you're actually looking for by looking for the least obvious place that it would be. You might be attracted to something in the garden, a plant, a flower, 
tree, an empty space, a statue, a particular color. There might be a sound. sound of the wind rustling through the trees, a sound of a vibration from the ground, a sound of waves upon a small pool of water or a fountain or animals within the garden. There might be a fragrance that you're attracted to, the smell of a flower, the freshness of a breeze. Or the smell of grass that was freshly cut. Or maybe some herbs or vegetables that are growing in the garden. You might even find some edible plants or vegetables or fruits within the garden. You might imagine tasting them. And experiencing the wonders of the garden. The smells, the tastes, beautiful colors, the sounds, what I really want you to explore now is the feeling that you get, being in your garden of life. as the best or least better version of you. You come upon a reflecting pond. The water is still. And as you bend over and look down into the pond, you see a reflection of yourself. Perfectly still. Clearly. Observing. Who you are. Deep within. The reflection of who you truly are deep within because this is your garden your garden to discover who you are the seeds that you've planted in your life all grow in this garden the seeds of possibility become the garden of reality for you to plant in your mind whatever it is that you want and it manifests because of who you are you're the gardener You're the one who gets to enjoy this. And some plants you can, you can get that are already fully grown. And some plants and trees you can get that are young saplings. And some you plant from seed 
and you wait patiently. Watering the soil, making sure it's the proper level of nutrients in the soil. Pulling out any weeds or things that do not belong. And making sure that your best aspects of who you want to live into, the seeds that you want to take root and grow and blossom, that you plant them in the best organic topsoil to take root deep, deeper within. And imagine you come upon a bag of seeds and it seems unlikely that there would be anything in this bag of seeds that you've never explored before. And you've been looking for something that was less obvious that it was what you were looking for. So it might be obvious that this is the less obvious thing you were looking for. And you plant the seeds. You find the best soil in your garden. And you plant the seed without even knowing what it is. And the cool thing is, even as you're doing this, you realize that you're planting the seed of your own buried treasure. And sometimes the real treasure is not gold or silver or diamonds or pearls or wonderful things as much as it is the expression of a seed that you planted for yourself without even realizing what it would blossom into. You just allow yourself to be open, childlike, but not childish, childlike. In the beliefs that anything is possible for you in that wonderful sense of childlike innocence, where anything is possible. Even the seeds that you planted without even realizing what those seeds will grow into the most beautiful, wonderful outcome. And you realize now that it's not about the seed or what it grows into, it's about your ability as the gardener to explore and to discover these seeds of greatness that are already within you, the skills and the abilities to discover more 
and more. Because as much as you discover, as great as you realize are the seeds within you, you're more than that. Who you are is aligned with the things that are important to you. Perhaps it's to be satisfied on some deeper level. Perhaps it's to be enlightening to yourself and others. You can take a wonderful combination of the public version of you and the private version of you and the observed version of you and the yet unexplored version of you and design the ultimate you. So it's not just about any aspect of who you are. It's about all aspects of who you are. As you explore now and think about where you want to live, You might think about it on a big scale of what country you want to live in, what state you want to live in, or what town you want to live in, or what neighborhood you want to live in, what type of house, how it's decorated, how it's neat and clean, You might think about your ideal career. You might think about best business for you to be in. What you're doing and how you do it. You might do it in traditional ways or the way you've always done it, or you might find new ways to do it even better. These might be your choices and how you're gonna do it. And it might be ways that you've discovered from observation of others and how they do it in a better way. Think about the level of finances, and what you want, how much money you want, how much money you need, how much money it will take for you to be free, to plan your future, to plan your finances, to plan your life in a way that you're living your dream life. What will it take to finance your dream life? Security around money, predictability around money, whatever it takes. You think about your friendships, your family, significant other, the important relationships in your life. And how you can explore and become even more of who you are.
You can look at the area of personal growth, things you're doing to improve yourself. Even considering this meditation as a way of exploring, discovering, planting the right seeds and growing into who you are. Spiritual being manifested in the earthly plane of existence to be even more than you think you are. Connected to each other and a higher power and a better version of yourself. Or simply taking some time to have fun and recreate yourself. I mean, a lot of people call it recreation, but it's based on the words re-creation, recreating who you are. So even this meditation now is a way for you to recreate who you are. Think about when people go away on a vacation, when you take a vacation, you come back brand new. You recreate who you are based upon exploring different places, different cultures. Different aspects of who you are living in the world. Recreating yourself within your awareness. So life is not based upon your environment. or even so much about what you do. You can start to explore how you're capable of doing so much more that even the things you thought were impossible, you might be capable of when you start to realize why it's important to you. What's the value in exploring something that even if you thought was impossible for you, it's important enough that it's worth exploring and taking the time for yourself now. in a moment I'm going to count from one up to five and as I reach five you'll find yourself no longer as the observer of your garden no longer as the observer of yourself in the reflection of who you truly are but you'll find yourself within yourself as yourself, as the better version of yourself, as the garden, you are the garden. So the treasure is not buried without you buried within you. It's part of who you are already.
and it's already been planted and it's already growing. And it may take one minute of time for it to sprout. Two, realize the wonder of what it is you're discovering. There might even be three things that you learn about yourself as part of this process. And as always, it's not just for you to observe. It's for yourself and it's for all the people that you come in contact, in contact with to observe an even better version of who you are. As much as you realize who you are, you're even more than that. You're even better than that. And how wonderful it is to take the time now to discover this for yourself and for the benefit of others, to enlighten others, to be more satisfied within yourself and to be more satisfying and enlightening to others now as well into your future. So when you're ready, you can begin experiencing this now with not just one or two or three or even four of your senses awakening to this reality. But when you're ready to see the world and be in the world as a more authentic, better version of who you truly are, then and only then can you now open your eyes with all five of your senses fully awake, fully alert, and fully aware of just how great it feels to be the better version of you, aren't you? Glad that you're you. Did you order more? Okay. So, how'd you enjoy that? Good. <laughs> it was good. Okay, Suzanne gives it a thumbs up. Okay. If I could get my phone to stop ringing, it'd be great. <laughs> okay. That's the one thing I forgot to remind people to turn off your phones. I, I yeah. kind of said, you know, but. It's built into the trance for you to have, um, you know, any distractions are just going to bring you deeper and deeper into the trance. So hopefully that worked for you. You know, I'm not an amateur. I'm pro Mark, as you can see on my hat here. <laughs> Anyone who's a drummer knows where this really comes from, but okay. I'll take it. It's got my name and it says pro. I'm no amateur, right? So I have new hats coming as soon as the world reopens and they can make hats again. I have hats that are going to say the personal mind trainer and they'll be available for all of you to, to have one if you want. Um, so, so Larry, how'd you enjoy this? Very nice, Mark. Very relaxing. Okay. Cool. Any, uh, any questions, any concerns, any feedback, anything I need to know? I look relaxed. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Actually, me and Larry are in the same uh, networking group, and it turns out we know each other for a long time. We just didn't realize it. Okay, cool. So glad you could join us. And um, as always, I'm, I'm going to make an appeal to everyone. Um, if you enjoyed this at all, which I hope you did, and if you didn't, let me know what you didn't like and what you want more of or what you were expecting that I didn't deliver on. Because uh, my goal in this is to deliver more value, but it's really, you know, for you. So it, it's, you know, I can, I can talk a lot. Anyone who knows me, I, I've got lots of really interesting things uh, to talk about as Howard, who knows me for years, was on earlier. I don't see him on anymore. So he, he may have had to go to a different meeting, uh, but you know, I, I can talk on many subjects, you know, I was talking earlier about spirituality, but you know, all, all 10 areas of life, and I'm, I'm going to start a program uh, 
very soon I'm gonna have it available for groups where we explore one of the 10 areas each week. So one week we'll explore spirituality, one week we'll explore health, one week we'll explore um, you know, where, where you live in the world, your physical environment, one week we'll explore your career, one week we'll explore finances. So you know, each of these 10 areas of life um, so that you can start to uh, become the best of the best version of you in each of those 10 areas. Um, and then that ties in with my uh, Design the Ultimate You program. So, you know, tonight was a little taste of that, of who you are, right? So, you, you know, it, sometimes it takes a while for it to, to manifest all the things, the benefits of what you experienced tonight. But if, if you played along and you explored a little bit, um, just be open be open to discovering things, you know, you may stumble upon something, it may come, come about in a way that you didn't expect. And, you know, you'll, you'll find that buried treasure, you know, probably within the next couple of days or within the week for sure. So anyone have any other questions or comments or concerns? My goal is to end on time. <laughs> I would one go longer if people lines, have questions to ask. Sorry? One of, my, one of my favorite lines tonight was take the time to have fun and recreate who you are. I love that. Cool. I, I like we, we all need to take more time for fun. Yeah, I like the, the garden too. I just love that. It's nice. <laughs> hey, cool. You are the garden. Mm. Think about that. You're the garden. I like that. And everything that grows is, is a part of who you are within that garden. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of my work is helping people to, to weed the garden, but more importantly, plant what you want to grow in the garden. Because when you plant a lot of good stuff in your garden, there's no room for the weeds. Mm. Think about that. <laughs> like it. Anyone, anyone else with a question, a comment, a concern? Just have a good week and stay well, and thank you for tonight. Okay. Thank, thank you for you. being here, Barbara. And happy birthday, Mark. Oh, thank you so much. Yes. Yes, yes happy, happy, happy birthday. Oh, happy uh, birthday. When is your birthday? Today? Yesterday was my birthday. Um, I, turned, I turned 57. Oh. I can't believe it. My kids, I think, I, my kids think I faked my ID, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'll go with it. You know, I, I, got, I got young genes, you know? Yeah, I, got some, I got some brand new genes, you know? <laughs> exactly. you no, a birthday present. New genes. Um, so... Um, I, as always, I thank you all for being here. I, I feel so grateful for the opportunity to share with you uh, the tools and the skills and the abilities that I have. And also, uh, for anyone interested, I changed the dates on my hypnosis certification class uh, because I didn't realize, you know, somewhere growing up, to me, Labor Day. Uh, Memorial Day was always the last weekend in May. I don't know where that got switched. I don't know which president I, I know. switched it or <laughs> what happened. I know we had a president way back when that switched when daylight savings time happened. You know, I don't, I don't get that, but okay, whatever. We'll deal with it. But somewhere along the line, Memorial Day got switched, and I don't know how that happened, but I messed up, and I made the class for this weekend, but I was told by a lot of people that they could make it more if it wasn't on a holiday weekend. So it's going to be next weekend, the 30th and 31st. I'm switching it to a Saturday and a Sunday. Um, this is an intensive hypnosis certification. So everything that you experienced here tonight, you'll be able to do with people. Cool. Awesome. You'll be able to elicit from people what they want. You'll be able to induce a trance. You'll be able to guide them to go deeper into that. 
you be able to take the information that you gathered in the script and apply it to create a script for what they will experience in the trance. And then you'll be able to bring them out of the trance and future pace it so that they live into the results of it. We're gonna go through how to, um, how to set up programs rather than, um, rather than just do individual sessions with people. And you will, you will learn to be, a hypnotist. but this is not the fluff. I'm not getting into the history of hypnosis. I'm not getting into all the different languaging and things that could be used. I mean, these are like more advanced skills. It's really, I've gotten rid of all the fluff and this is just what you need to start doing. I've worked with a lot of people over the years that have been trained as trainers of hypnosis. They're certified trainers of hypnosis and they've never hypnotized one client. So that's really what I designed this around is taking my 25, 27, 28 years, I don't know, I've lost count, but <laughs> more than 25 years of experience, I've kind of filtered out all of the stuff that doesn't really matter and just like narrowed it down to 10 hours of only the tools and skills that you need to be able to hypnotize someone professionally. So after just two days, you will be able to um, get clients and charge them for doing hypnosis. Yes. Or you can use it as an what? additional tool no, good, or I'm anything saying. else that you do with your life. I'm saying thank you. So that will come out. Uh, the link for that, if you want to join, will be in the email that will go out uh, tomorrow or the next day with the replay of this. Uh, but just if you want, clear your calendar. And it will be on the 30th and 31st from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So five hours a day, we'll have a break in the middle. Um, and in 10 hours, you will have the opportunity to be a certified hypnotherapist. Okay, there, there is additional testing that goes along with that. And you will need to know the history and all that fun stuff. But um, more details will go out in the email. And I thank you all for being here tonight and staying an extra couple minutes to listen to my, my rant about my offer to you. Like if you've ever thought about being a hypnotist, this is the least expensive that I will ever offer it for sure. Um, for a live class that's gonna be interactive that you can be like this where you, you get to see live video, you'll be interactive, you'll break out into different rooms and be able to play with things. After the first day, you'll be able to induce a trance with someone. After the second day, you'll be able to do a complete session with someone and get clients and charge money. And the least that anyone I know of has ever charged of, of my students is $80 an hour. So if that sounds appealing to you to start, that's a great start, okay? I know people that are charging um, at least five times that, some people that are charging almost 10 times that. Okay, so it's whatever you want to make of it. You get comfortable with your level of skill and ability. Um, and the other thing that I'm going to offer to people is you're going to get one hour one on one with me that after you start doing it, I'm going to help you to shape the direction that you take it in and how you can make it the tool that works best for you, be it as a professional um, career or an additional tool to what you're already doing. Um, and then there'll, there'll be an additional class of another two days that will be master hypnosis. And that will be more of the deeper languaging skills, uh, conversational hypnosis, um, sleight of mouth, which is like a, a magician uses sleight of hand, a uh, hypnotherapist uses sleight of mouth to kind of redirect the way that you're thinking and shift beliefs really quickly. It's not a permanent shift, it's a temporary shift um, so that you can then follow up with another technique to deepen the shift and make it more permanent. Um, so th that will be the second class. A lot of, a lot of people use that, uh, those tools and skills for coaching, uh, for therapy, for helping people to make changes in their life. I've done that with uh, salespeople that use it for hypnotic language of sales and also changing themselves to make themselves better at what they do. So a lot of these tools, it starts off with, with your experience for yourself and then how you can take that experience 
and share it and pass it along to others. So anyone who's interested can reach out to me uh, directly and privately, re reply to the email, or I believe my, my phone number is in all of the emails you've received for this. And I, I look forward to helping anyone who wants to learn that. So have a great night. I thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Um, share, share, share. <laughs> Let people know we got room to grow. We had maybe 10 or 11 people here tonight and we got room for like 90 more. <laughs> so plenty of room for you to invite uh, friends and family and strangers. Um, you know, if you're, if you're guessing who'll enjoy this, stop guessing, just invite everybody and they'll, they'll, they'll filter themselves out and the right people will show up here. I believe that a thousand percent. So have a great night, everybody. And Thank you, Mark. You too. Thank you. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you. Take care. Wife Bye. is in hospital, Ed. I hope your wife is better. Okay, take care. You, Bye. -bye. You, you muted, Bye. Ed. Okay. He heard you. Okay. Bye. Be well, everybody. You too. So long, all. Thank you.